the journey of the soul. You're sitting here, you're thinking, like everybody else on this planet, that this is my life, and when my life goes, then that's it. I'll be somewhere else, but we think of it as this is life. This is it now, we're here, and all my family members and others who are with me, I wish I can stay for a very, very, very long time with my mom, my dad, my sisters, my brothers, whatever the case is, with husband and wife, whoever it is, they want to stay for a long, long, long time. But we all know, we all know it's not too possible. And what I want to say to you brothers and sisters is that we think that when a person has gone from this world, it is death, we call it death, it is the cessation of life, it is the end of one's life, and it's, it, they're gone. And the end of this body and this life is finished. Yet, when the Qur'an was revealed, it gave a new term, a whole total new term. When the Qur'an was revealed, the Qur'an, yes, did use the word mot, and it said everybody has to ta taste death. But he didn't, did not stop there. He said, Kullu nafsin dha'iqatul mawt. And then with that he added things on. It said, Yutawaffawun. You are being transferred. You are being taken to a new world. You are traveling. You are going from this place to another place. The Quran used this term. What did that mean? That means that you, we don't actually die. We don't come to an end. Yes, we taste death, but we move on. And it's not the first time that it's ever happened. It's happened before, that we move from one world to another world. So I want to tell you brothers and sisters, that when we think of our life, don't think of a life on its own and don't think of death as the end of that life. This life is only one small part to a massive life Allah has created for us. In fact, right now you, all of you who are listening to this, you are actually in some ways eternal. And in that eternal life, Yes, we had a birth somewhere, Allah created us. Somewhere Allah created us, we had a birth. And I'm not talking about the birth in this world. I'm talking about the birth of the soul. There's a time when my soul and your soul was created. And once it was created, it was never to go dead ever, except one death, which is the death of this world when we face that death. And after that, we just transfer. And throughout this entire life, there are many times Allah transfers us from one world to another world. And there's five transfers each and every one of us go through. The six whole worlds that we will live in. Five transfers and six whole worlds. So we have actually got six lives in six different worlds because each world transfers us to a new world. Now Subhanallah Azim. You start with the, with the first world and you think, well, what am I talking about? Do you realize that we were as souls Allah has created us and He had created us from the backbone of Adam alayhi salatu wasalam? And Allah from there took out, when He created Adam alayhi salam as one, one single person, in His, in his spine, Allah put the seeds of every single human being ever to come on this earth. All those were inside His spine, me and you, all of us. All the six billion together on this earth, all, all, whoever you can say were inside his spine. And from that spine, Allah Azza wa then, because the ability of, of this, of him having children, those children having children, those children having children, is all in his spine. But Allah created of those spines, he created, and from those, from those seeds in his spine, Allah created arwah. He created souls. So what that meant is, there were many souls Allah created and I was one and you were one. Now we don't know, we don't know yet, as of yet, anything else except where we are. We are just souls. And there's Adam alayhi salam and he's got a spine and in that spine there are many seeds. And those seeds are going to be passed on from generation to generation to generation to generation. And somewhere down the lines, Allah will choose for me a body 
a body and he will choose for you a body and we didn't we didn't actually know that we were there in al it's called alamun arwah this is our first life this is where i was this is where you were in fact the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has told us that in this world when you actually see someone and you kind of recognize them but you don't know where you saw them and you look at them and you think I've seen you somewhere, I've seen you somewhere, you can't actually pinpoint where, and you haven't actually ever seen them on this earth. Our Prophet ﷺ has alluded that it could be that we saw them as a soul in Alam al Arwah, in the, in the world of souls, where we lived a whole life, me and you, we lived there for thousands and thousands and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. We don't know how long Allah Azza wa Jal kept us in there, we don't know. And when Allah Azza wa Jal made us as souls, one day, before he even sent any, anyone, before he sent Adam alayhi salam to the earth, and before he sent Hawa to the earth, we were as souls, and, and we were in a place, just, just souls, that's it, just, we knew each other. I, I didn't know you as my sister, if you were my real sister in, in, in this world. No, 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 you were just, you were just a soul. There's no, there's no he or she or anything about a soul, it was just a soul. And we conversed with one another, whoever it was. And then one day Allah Azza wa Jal tests us and He says, He brings all the souls together and He asks me and you a question which is in the Quran. Allah says, وَإِذْ أَخَذَ رَبُّكَ مِنْ بَنِي آدَمَ مِنْ ظُهُورِهِمْ ذُرِّيَّتَهُمْ وَأَشْهَدَهُمْ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ Allah Azza wa Jal asked me and you a question. And He said, He said, أَلَسْتُ بِرَبِّكُمْ He said, Am I not your provider that gives you everything you ever have? Am I not the reason why you are alive? Am I not the reason why you are surviving at this moment and you have everything you need? And we were like, we did not know anything else. We just knew there's a bunch of souls around here. The only focus we ever had was Allah. That's all we ever knew. We just knew Allah, Allah, Allah. That was it. Our breathing was Allah. Our breathing was Allah. Our knowing was Allah, our seeing was Allah, our yearning was Allah, and it was only Allah, Allah. And there were souls around here, we see them, but we're actually in the dhikr of Allah constantly. All we know is that our purpose is Allah. Just like the angels had a purpose, and the purpose of actually being on this earth, uh, and before this earth, as well as being on this earth, they only know how to obey Allah. We only knew how to obey Allah, and only see Him as the prime focus for everything. And Allah Azza wa Jal, then addresses us and says, Am I not your provider? And we said, Bala shahidna. We all said in one go, all of us said, we said, Bala, of course, of course, shahidna. We are witness to this. Then Allah turned around to us and said, And taqulu yawm al qiyamah inna kunna an hadha ghafilin. I'm saying this to you today, lest one of you says to me on the day of judgment that I wasn't aware of this. Allah, I wasn't aware of all of this. أو تقول إنما أشرك آباؤنا من قبل وكنا ذرية من بعدهم. Or perhaps you will come to me on the day of judgment and you will say it was my parents' fault. Allah is my parents' fault. They were misguided and therefore I was misguided. Allah said already, don't bring me these excuses for the day of judgment. And what happened? We were like, we're here. We only know you as Lord. And then Allah brings Adam alayhi salam down to the earth and Hawa down to the earth, and now they're going to have children. So as they have the first set of children, Allah picks two souls up. Whichever two souls he took. And you are going into the fetus of Hawa. You are going into the fetus of Hawa and you are now going to become the, the soul that is encaged in this body till I release you. And your mission is that when you get when you go to that body, you are to carry on seeing me as your provider. And you need to find, you will find many things on the earth. It was, it was almost like unreal for some of us over there. What? One by one, we're leaving, we're leaving, and we didn't want to leave. This was a comfortable world. We only knew Allah Azza wa and we were so comfortable, and we loved this place. We only knew Allah, and we didn't want to leave. And then comes a time when we had to leave. The question is, did you want to leave? No. Did I want to leave? No. And then when it comes a time that I'm, I, my name is called out and I'm going to become, I'm going to become. Okay, I did not know these two souls before. I did not know these two souls before. And like, for example, my father's name is Awlad. Rahimahullah. May Allah have mercy on him. Say Ameen. And my, my mother's name was Ruqayya. 
May Allah have mercy on her, say Amin. Both of them have gone to the next world. So I was, I mean, I don't remember these guys, okay? I don't remember this, yeah? But this is from the scriptures, I'm telling you that this is this happened. I came and you came to whichever your parents are. And Allah said, you're now, you know what? The fetus is already there. The baby has already matured to four months. Three sets of 40 days have gone by. And this is a hadith in Bukhari, where Allah Azza wa Jalla has chose you to go into that fetus. And he said, you're going to become the one that will be encaged in this body until I release you. And this now, this woman is going to be the mother and this person is going to be your father. This is a connection Allah built. And anyone else who shared that womb before you or after you becomes your brother or your sister. And that's it. But before that, prior to that, we did not have any mother, any father. We did not have any brother, any sister. And imagine when I was in the womb and when you were in the womb. Imagine we're there now in a new world. We did not want to go. The angel comes according to Hadith of Bukhari and the angel blows the soul inside, inside the whole body like you would inflate a tire. The way you would inflate a tire with air, this whole fetus had a soul breathed into it. The heartbeat of a fetus has nothing to do with a person being alive or dead. The thing to do with a being alive or dead is whether your soul has left your body or not. There are many cases in the world, sometimes people die seeing the dead, their, their pulse has completely stopped. There's been cases, wallahi, there's been cases that people have told me that at first hand they've seen this. That a, like a mother or somebody else who was buried inside the grave, they did the janazah and then after that they heard something, they heard something from underneath and they took her back out. Why? Because she hadn't died. The pulse had stopped. The heartbeat had stopped. But sometimes there are conditions that the soul is still there and people don't realize that. And sometimes you wake up again and it only takes a real expert doctor to realize if that case has happened with someone. So anyway, my point is that when, we, when we're coming to that in, inside the Allah Azza wa, Azza wa Jal sends the angel ثُمَّ يَنْفُخُ فِيهِ الرُّوح He blows inside it, inside it, this, this, this soul that was me and I'm trapped inside. And imagine now, I'm here now, what am I going to do? All I see is what? I see redness. It's my mother's womb. I see redness. You saw redness. And the fetus that's inside there only knows that it's just there, lying there. That's it. Movement is made, whatever, but it doesn't have to do anything. It's fed automatically through a tube that goes straight into its stomach and into its belly button. It's fed. Now, tell me this here. Let me ask you a question. If at that moment when the baby is growing, at five months, six months, seven months, imagine there's two twins. I just want you to imagine this. There's two twins. And there's a believing twin and there's an unbelieving twin for what's, what's going to happen in the next world. And the believing twin says to its counterpart, he says, Hey, listen, bruv, me and you, we're going to be coming out here one day and we're going to go to another world. And the other one says, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? He said, listen, when we come out, we're going to see big space. He says, space? I don't know no space. This is it. When we come out, there'll be light, there'll be color, there'll be texture, there'll be people, there'll be language, there'll be cars, there'll be, you know, phones, there'll be people who are busy, there'll be communication, there'll be buildings. <coughs> Listen, I don't know anything about this. Have you ever seen that yourself? No, I haven't. Have you ever seen anyone leave this place? No, I haven't. Have you ever seen anyone come back from that world you're talking about to this place where me and you are and to tell us that all of this is going to, that this happened and they saw it firsthand and they came back? No, I haven't. Well, you, my brother, you are starting to lose it. When we go out there, yeah, I'm telling you, I've heard this, I've heard, whis I've heard whispers, I've heard things. Imagine that the twin said, I'm just making this up, yeah, but I want, I'm going to give you a lesson. I'm going to give you a lesson in the end. Imagine the twin said that when I was there in the, in, the, in the world of souls, I heard, I heard this is what happens. 
I heard this is what happens and you go out and you know what? When we go out, we have to live ourselves, we have to eat ourselves, we have to eat from here. Are you crazy? You ever see me, you eat from here? Because no, but I'm telling you, listen, I don't eat. I don't eat. I get provided, you get provided automatically. I don't know what you're talking about. And the believer will carry on giving all his, all his evidences. And the disbeliever is denying all his evidences on what? And not seeing anything, or not having the experience, or not seeing anybody else come back and give them information, and it's all down to that. But we know, we know, both of those have to leave the womb. And when they leave the womb, you can imagine that there's going to be a great shock in that twin if you really never believe what's about to happen. Why have I just said that to you, my brothers and sisters? Because you know what? On, in this earth right now, right now the believers are saying to the, to, to the people who don't believe in this, when we die from this world, this is, this is the third world we're in. The first world was Alamul Arwah. The first transfer was to the mother's womb. The second world was the mother's womb. The second transfer was to this dunya. The third world is this dunya. This is our third life. Guys, wake up. This is our third life we're living. And the third transfer is going to be to Barzakh, a world trapped between here and the blowing of the horn. A world trapped between death and blowing of the horn. And we're saying to all the people who don't believe in this message, and I want to say today, there are Muslims who are, who are weak in their faith. And there are Muslims because of the interaction in this world, they have kind of lost their compass. There are Muslims who are now doubting the afterlife. There are Muslims who are saying, really? What about if we have reincarnation? What about if we go out there as a soul and come back to a stone? Or we come back to another animal? Or we come back to a leaf? Or we come back to a tree? There are Muslims who have been affected by the belief of atheism. And they're saying, listen, we've never seen anyone come back. Have you ever seen anyone come back and tell you from the grave that he actually saw the other side and he saw the angel of death and he saw the world of angels and there's a world beyond this and we all say all the believers saying no and the unbelievers the non-believers are saying to us well my friend well my friend you are going slightly crazy in there right seriously and the thing is, our messengers have told us, all the messengers, the Qur'an has told us that there is a life beyond this. And just like the twins, they deny one another's statements the same way the believers and non-believers both will find themselves in barzakh once we leave. And if you don't want to believe in this, if you don't want to believe in this, then you take a risk. And your risk is this, which is what was said in the palace of Fir'aun. Surah number 40, ayah number 28. That you, Fir'aun, and you, my courtiers, my friends, this was a man who had Iman in his heart, but he hid his Iman. And he said, In yaku kadiban fa'alayhi kadibu. If Moses or Musa alayhi salam is a liar, then his lie will befall him. Suppose we believe in Musa's story that there's an afterlife. Suppose we believe in that. And then we die and there's nothing. Have we lost anything? No, we haven't lost anything. Have we, have we lost anything? No, we haven't lost anything. But he said, وَإِن يَكُوا صَادِقًا يُصِبُكُمْ بَعْضُ الَّذِي يَعِدُكُمْ But if it turns out, then when we die, my courtiers, my friends, Fir'aun, when we die, and we find out that Musa was right, then part of what he has said will befall us and we will face the punishment for not believing in the message that he gave to us. Allahu Akbar. Now if you don't want to believe in any of this, whoever you are, and I understand this is a time of fitna and there are a lot of Muslims out there, all you know, out there they're getting, they're getting bombarded. Right now you have parents, we've come out, we are brothers and sisters, Allah gave us friends, Allah gave us 
Allah gave us position in this world. Allah gave me intelligence. Allah gave me sight. Allah gave me hearing. Allah gave me a mind to think. Allah gave me freedom. Allah gave me movement. Allah gave me beauty. Allah gave me intelligence. Allah gave me skill. Allah provides for me when I don't need to think about it. And I'm in a different life and different form now. Allah gave me so many friends and gave me so many people and so many things around. And then Allah gave me a house. Comfort, nice carpet, gave me a mattress and sofa, and oh my god, you know, the drink next to me and the TV set that's on, and oh, it's so enjoyable, and I don't want to leave this world. And some others, they have so much enjoyment with their friends and family and everyone. You know what happens? These people, they don't want to leave. And if you ask, if you ask them, do you want to leave for the next world? They say, no, no, I don't know what you're talking about. I don't want to leave here. I'm comfortable. We were comfortable in Alam al-Arwah. We were comfortable in the, in, in the mother's womb. We did not want to leave Alam al-Arwah. We did not want to leave the mother's womb. And nobody wants to leave this earth. That's the truth. Because there's so much, so much comfort around. And the more you move in life, the more things you own. And that's what makes you become heavy on the ground. The more things you own, the more things you enjoy, that's what makes you heavy. That's why zakat has become fard on this ummah. That's why sadaqah is encouraged. Why? Because the more you make yourself a person who is investing in this and saving that, and the bank balance is here, and you are in a mode of, whoa, 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 I own a house, I own a car, I own a phone. Wow. All I need is a wife, or some might say a Wi-Fi, okay? <laughs> some people, they treat their Wi-Fi more closer to them than their wife. I just want to say that, right guys? Okay, so be careful. I don't know what you guys are laughing at. <laughs> you do the same to them. But anyway, so the guy gets this ownership and that ownership and slowly, you know what? You got your, your degree, your owner of a degree. Then you're, you're in a company and first you're working yourself up and then you find yourself established in a, in a good job, secure job. You're coming home every day with salary. You've got, you've got kids, you've got children, you own those children. They're yours. The property is yours. And then you've got, and you've invested in a flat. It's yours. And you're going on holidays, you're spending your money, it's yours. And you save and you save and it's enjoyable to spend that money. You, you enjoy the time on this earth and who wants to leave? That's why Islam has said, give, why? And you have to give 2.5%. Why? Because Allah does not want us to lose our moral compass. Allah does not want us to lose our compass to forget where we're going. We're not here to stay. This is the third life. Allah has given us six lives. We're halfway through, and not even halfway in terms of time. We're only halfway in terms of the numbers. And Allah doesn't want greed to come in that makes us want to stay on this earth. And Allah says spend, and that's the reason why. Allah makes us go to Hajj. Why? Because He wants us to dress like dead men and dead women and go and say, Labbaik, oh Allah, I'm here, I'm here. I'm on, I'm on the day of judgment. I'm on, I'm on Arafat, which is supposed to be a part of day of judgment. Allah makes us by compulsion. He makes us pray five times a day. Why? Oh human being, don't forget where you came from and where you're going. You did not come Come from your mother's womb. You did not come from your father's spine. You came from Alamul Arwah. And where are you going? You're not going just to another house or another home. You're not just going to the grave. You're going ultimately, you're going to an entire world where you will be eternal. And Allah does not want us to forget that link. So He, by compulsion, He says, I'm not going to make you pray five times in one part of the day. I'm going to make you pray at one end Fajr and the other end Isha. In the middle, there's going to be Asr and both sides there's going to be Zuhar and there's going to be Maghrib on both sides. I want you to remember me in five separate parts. Allahu Akbar. And some Muslims come, they say, Shaykh, you know, Allahu Akbar. I don't get people. Yeah, one guy comes to me and, and he, he says to me, he says, Sheikh, he said, I, I, I pray, I pray at work. He said, but you know, I can't always pray. I said, why can't you always pray? He said, because, you know, I don't, you know. I said, what do you mean? What do you, what do you mean, you know? Because I, I, I see, you know, the cupboard that we've got here, the storing cupboard, I pray inside there. I said, why are you praying inside the storing cupboard? He goes, I don't want to, I don't want anyone to see me, Sheikh. I said, what in the world are you doing in a story? Because if somebody comes up, basically they just pretend not to pray. The guy pretending to take something out. And he goes, Sheikh, because of this, sometimes my salah is qada. So is it okay for me to come home at the end of the day? And I am so truth and faithful to my Lord. I pray, Zuhar, Asr, Maghrib, Isha, in one go. 
Allahu Akbar. The guy's asking, can he do dhar, asr, maghrib, isha, one go, faithful to his Lord, one wudu, four salahs, no, no problem. My God, the guy, the guy, what does he think this is? What does he think this is? If I told him, my friend, you've got to, you know, you've got to fly from here to Dubai and catch another plane. From there, you've got to fly to, you know, whoever, whatever, Bangladesh, okay? You probably like that, right? Yeah, it was mentioned, yeah. So from there, you've got to fly somewhere else to Australia in three segments. And I told you, you've got to fly in one segment strapped in one seat all the way. Come on, it's different. It's different. Allah's told you five daily prayers. Why? Because he's, he knows you're going to take a break. And then he wants you to get back in and pray and take a break and get back in. And he wants to take a, take a break. My friends, salah, fasting, all this prescribed on us. Why? Because he wants the ruh to connect to alamul arwah, our roots, and where we're going to the akhirah. And Allah Azza wa Jal wants to stay awake. That's why who we are. You're saying to me right now, well, why can't we have boyfriends and girlfriends? Because Allah wants you to have a life where you're serious and you don't have so much love that because of that love, you forget. Get Allah. Now it is okay for us to enjoy the world. Don't get me wrong. It's, in, it's okay to enjoy the world. But please don't get sucked into this world to the extent that you forget that this was only one life out of six lives that you've got. Just don't make that mistake. Because when the moment comes and when it's time for me to leave, and when it's time for you to leave, the first thing that will strike me is when the angels come and it's a time for me to wake up, the first thing that will strike me and strike you is what? Is that, oh my God, oh my Allah, oh my Allah, Allah, Allah. Why? Because I was, I am a soul. I'm not this body, I'm a soul. That's the first thing that will strike. Oh my Allah, this is now going to be the beginning of the fourth life. Oh my Allah, I was there in the Alam al-Arwah. I just remember it like yesterday. We'll wake up. Well, that's why Tawbah is not accepted when you've seen the angels. Nobody can repent to Allah. Nobody can do Tawbah at the time when you've seen the angels. When the angels appear to us at death, that's it. It's finished. Game over. Your whole life that you had on this earth was only part of an entire life. And that's when we realize, you know what? I'm now going to go forward. And I've got no way to go backward, back. Just like no child born on this earth ever goes back to his mother's womb. The same way no person leaving this world ever comes back to this world. Nobody. And that's it. Now it's the fourth world. What is it? It's Barzakh. At the time of death, the soul then is reached by the angels. That time we cut off from the people around us. That time no mother, no father, no brother, no sister. We know that time is just coming out of the body and it's me, the, the actual soul itself. And I come out and at this time what happens is when they put my body in the grave, my soul goes to either Illiyin or Sijin. This is the life of Barzakh. This is the fourth life. If I'm a good, good, good soul, I go to Illiyin. If I'm a bad soul, I go to Sijin. Both mentioned in Surah Mutafifin of the Quran. And what happens is a person when they make this journey and they go there, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has told us and he's given us good news about Illiyin. Allahu Akbar. May Allah make us of them. Say Amin. What happens is this. We lose a family here. You know, we guys are so sucked in this world. So sucked. That's my sister. I love my sister. I can't live without my sister. Some people have the WhatsApp status. How do you live without your sister? Well, you didn't live without your sister before your sister came. I'm sure you'll be able to live with your sister after your sister goes or you go. So anyway, so we get so sucked up. It's like you can't, you know, you're so enjoyable. Oh my God, oh my God, I haven't seen the angels. I haven't seen the angels. You get so sucked up, you forget about the real life. And then what happens is you lose your family on this earth and you gain another family on the, in the other world. What do I mean? My friends, our Prophet ﷺ has told us how the news reaches the gates of Illiyin, of whoever is coming from this earth. And they there in Illiyin are always saying to the angels, who's coming, who's coming, who's coming? And when they say, it is Munawwar Hussein, who's from E1. Yeah, whatever street that might be. Yeah, Munawwar Hussein in E1 in the heart of White Chapel is coming up. You know Munawwar Hussein's dad, his mom that went before, maybe his granddad and his great grandfather and his uncles. And now they come rushing forward. Is there any family members that come rushing forward to the 
entrance of the gate. They want to receive their child, their grandchild. And when he enters, he now realizes, if he's a good soul only, if he's only a good soul, this happens. He now realizes that he's got a whole family out here. Not just the ones he's seen. He hasn't seen his great, great, great grandfather. Even he looks at him and they catch up on news. And his father, mother and others say to him, How's your sister? How's that son of yours? How is so-and-so? What about the other one? Did she get married? Has she, is she married yet? They catch up on news of this world. That's the first thing they do. But if it's a bad soul, then they go to Sijin and they don't see any families there whatsoever. And what a life that would be for a person to live, live in this world and to end up in Sijin. May Allah Azza wa forgive us. May Allah protect us from going there. Say Ameen. So anyway, this is the fourth world. What happens in the fourth world? Well, guess what? You get comfortable again if you're in Aliyin. You get comfortable. You're with your family, the families that went before you. And now you're waiting for others to come from the world. You want your sister to come to the to, to Aliyin. You hope she gets to Aliyin. You pray she gets to Aliyin. That's why people on this earth, earth sometimes have dreams. How do you have a dream? How do you meet a person who's already gone? Well, the people in Aliyin, they make a request to Allah. Oh Allah, I'd like to see so-and-so of my family member in the world in a dream. If only Allah wills, they get the, get the, they get the wish granted. So what happens? What happens is, subhanAllah, think of this, this is amazing. This is amazing and this happens every single night. What Allah has done is during the night, when you go to sleep tonight and I go to sleep tonight and last night and the night before that and every single night of my life, what Allah says in the Holy Quran in Surah Zumar, Surah number 39, I think it's ayah number 46. Allah says, Allah yatawaffal anfusa hina mawtiha wallati lam tamut fi manamiha. Allah catches souls twice, two times. Once when you're dead, he catches you and he takes you, transfers you to the next world. This is what I've just been talking about. And the second one where he catches you and he releases you and then he catches you and releases you and catches you and releases you and catches you and releases, takes you up and takes you back down, takes you up, takes you back down. For many, 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 many times is every time I go to sleep and every time you go to sleep. The Quran says, Wallati lam tamut fi manamiha. The one, the soul that hasn't died yet, who, who is in a state of sleep and a state of dreaming. And you, what happens is my soul goes up there, your soul goes up there. And sometimes you have a dream of someone on this earth. And that, why, how do you have it? Well, his soul or her soul got together with your soul. Sometimes it's your imagination. Okay, don't get me wrong. What happens is they, they go to a place, Alamul Al Ahlam. There's a world Allah has created, the, the world of dreams. Now every soul that has a true dream goes to that, to that world. And whoever is in Aliyin, if their request has been accepted, they also come to Aliyin and the two meet in that state. And this is so quick that it can happen like a blink of an eye. It can happen like a blink of an eye. That's how we see people who have passed away and we meet them in our dreams. Allahu Akbar. So anyway, if you want, you might think, well, that's some people's dreams. Do you have anything physical? Some people say, where's the physical thing that for Barzakh and for the life beyond the fourth life? Well, let me tell you this. There's been many individuals in the, in the past that this has happened to. And it, it has happened again recently. With Imam Bukhari rahimahullah, when they buried his body in the grave, in his grave in Russia, in Bukhara, in Russia, he was a Russian. Imam Bukhari was a Russian. You understand guys? We need to tell Putin that Imam Bukhari was a Russian, Allahu Akbar. Anyway, he when he was buried in his grave, there was a fragrance, a very strong fragrance of itr and of, of great, great fragrance of a nice smell coming strong, so strong that they never, they never smelled anything like this. So the people came to his grave straight after his janazah and they took soil from his grave. They took it home. This was like a whole piece of soil that's got this fragrance. You could rub it on your hands. You could rub it on your, on your body, on your skin and you've got really nice fragrance. So people then flocked to his grave for three days. Every day they would take soil, hand full of, hands full of soil. And then the ulama in his time, they made dua to Allah. They said, oh Allah, please stop this because the bid'ah is going to stop. And they said, oh Allah, please take this fragrance away because we have to carry on refilling the grave every single day. Can you imagine? Otherwise, they'll take all the soil from his grave. On the third day, it stopped. This is a well-known piece about his life when he died. Imam Bukhari, rahimahullah. 
And it's a very famous person that most of us are acquainted with. But it has happened again and again. Imam, there's Maulana Ahmad Ali Lahori Rahimahullah in Pakistan. A wonderful Shaykh I have so much admiration for. I wish I had met. I never met. When he died, his janazah, you know his janazah, Allahu Akbar. His janazah to carry the carry his his body onto the shoulders of people. You know how long it was? It was 14 miles. 14 miles people stood and they just they just crossed his body over shoulder from shoulder. You can imagine how many people were in his janazah. This was back in the 60s or something when he passed away. And you know what? When they buried him, the same thing happened. And you know in Bangladesh, Mushahid Bayampuri Rahimahullah, who's a wali of Bangladesh, the same thing happened in the 70s when he passed away. And guess what? The same thing like three days later, Allah took the, took the, the fragrance away. And then 2014, this is going last year back, Mushahid Bayampuri Rahimahullah in Bangladesh, suddenly his grave again gave off fragrance and it lasted for one whole day, Allahu Akbar. One whole day, a man who passed away 50 years ago, his grave again gives this, gives this uh, fragrance out. This is Allah showing us that the barzakh is a real world. And it's a world where you will remain. Though the body stays underneath there, the soul travels to a place called Aliyin. But there's a connection between the two. And what happens is in this fourth life, if you ask anyone, do you want to leave this world? The answer will be what guys? The answer will be what guys? No. Just as you did not want to leave Alam al Arwah, the first world, you did not want to leave the mother's womb, the second world, you did not want to leave the third world, the dunya, the same will happen. Nobody will want to leave Aliyin if they're in Aliyin. But if they're in Sijin, they will want to leave. They will want to come probably because they want to stop the punishment. They want to just get on and move out. But there might be a time when Allah will stop the punishment in Sijin. Allah only knows that. What happens after that? We come up on the day of judgment. What does Allah do? Allah then makes the angel blow the horn and all the souls in Iliyin are killed off. All that meaning that they, they cease to exist. This is not a real death. This is like another type of death. Yes, it's a type of death, but we only taste a real death where the angel of death comes and takes our soul out of our body. We only feel that once. So this is another time that everybody, everybody is now going to get switched off. So Allah switches off all the Iliyin people, all the Sijin people. He kills and he he, he makes the end of life for all the people on the earth and they all come to an end and the whole world comes to an end and Allah breaks everything that he ever created. He then takes it together, reshapes it, makes it flat and then he brings my body back wherever it was underneath the surface and your body underneath the surface. He then brings the soul of Iliyin from Sijin or Iliyin. He brings it into the body and then he tells the, the angel to blow again. He blows again and then that's when we wake up. This is now another new world. This is going to be the fifth world. This is going to be the fifth world and a fourth transfer. We wake up just as you woke up the day in your mother's womb. You were a fetus and you did not have any control over a body. Allah has now put you back again into your body. And I wake up and you wake up. And this time the only thing we do is we move and our heads move the soil from above and whatever it is and we come out. We come out on the day of judgment. This is now every single human being every jinn, every creation, every animal, every dinosaur, every single insect that Allah had created, all coming up on the Day of Judgment. Allah will make every living creature come on the Day of Judgment and Allah will make all of them come together on one platform, one piece. Now this time there are things that are different. Why? Because when I'm walking on the Day of Judgment, First thing is, in the world I had full control over my limbs, I could do what I wanted. In this world I can't do that. I have limited control over my body. Allah somehow directs me. I can't just run away in the other direction. It's just the force that brings me together to a center place in the Day of Judgment. This is the day when if I was to see my mother, then my mother was not really... Well, who is she? Who is my, who is my father? Who is my brother? Who is my sister? They're just souls that existed in Alam al-Arwah. 
that were put into different bodies and, and the connection was made between me and her womb. That's the connection and between me and that man who was my father. That's why the Quran says the family members what? Yawma idin. Allah says فَإِذَا نُفِخَ فِي الصُّورِ فَلَا أَنْسَابَ بَيْنَهُمْ On the day when Allah we will make the angel blow the horn, there will be no, there will be no family ties on this day. A mom does not see her daughter as her daughter. A brother does not see his own brother as his brother. And a wife does not see her husband as a husband and a husband doesn't see a wife as a wife. This is the day when Allah has created where we're back again with thinking of us as souls. We have no connection with one another. That's why we don't help one another. We don't want to see one another. In fact, we'll run away from one another. The Quran says, يَوْمَ يَفِرُّ الْمَرْءُ مِنْ أَخِي The day when a Man will run away from his own brother. Why? Because he's going to ask me for help. I don't want to be in a position where I have to turn him away and I have to embarrass him. That's the reason why. And then the only concern is me. Me, I was the soul. What did I do when Allah trapped me in a body for only 40 years, for only 60 years, for only 50 years, which today looks nothing because today's life is 50,000 years. And Alamul Arwah, the first life, was thousands and thousands and thousands of years. I lived, you lived. And the mother's womb was just five months because four months it was a fetus without you inside. And five months till your birth is only the time you spent in your mother's womb. So it seems so quick. And the world is what? 60 years, 40 years, 50 years. What? For the sake of me. For the sake of me getting so accustomed to the world, today I've got so many answers. It's not, it will look crazy. That's why people will say, and the Quran says, compared to the real life of a whole thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of years of the soul, compared to the day of judgment, 50,000 years I have to live in this world here, compared to the eternal Jannah or Jahannam, compared to that, they will refer to the life of the earth as what? They will say, Yoma, it was only one day. Some will say it was only half a day either it looks like a morning or it looks like an evening 60 years of life and they call it a morning 60 years of life and they call it an evening subhanallah and then after that when when the hisab comes this is now the new world new world either you are under the arsh of Allah with the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam drinking kawthar at his hands in a, at a pool of kawthar a beautiful drink either you are with the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam next to him and you're part of the ummah and Abu Bakr Umar and Uthman Ali radiyallahu anhu ajma'in and Talha and Zubair and all the Ashra Mubashara and the Sahaba and the companions they are your friends on that day either the Anbiya Musa alaihi salam Harun alaihi salam Nuh alayhi salam, Dawood alayhi salam, Suleiman alayhi salam, Yunus alayhi salam, Yusuf alayhi salam, Yaqub alayhi salam, Ibrahim alayhi salam, you have, you have Yusha, Yusha alayhi salam, you have Adam alayhi salam, you have Nuh alayhi salam, you have Salih alayhi salam, you have Hud alayhi salam. Either these are the people that you spend a whole banquet and a feast with and you're in their company and quickly forget 50,000 years for these people. For these people it will be like two rakats of the sunnah of Fajr prayer. That's how quick it will see either that life or the life under on the on the day of judgment under the sun a life where it seems like 50,000 years a life of desperateness a life of wanting to get across from here people will be so dressed desperate they will want Allah to just sentence them whichever way Allahu Akbar and then do the people want to move on from here this time it's a yes this time it's a yes. This is the only time people want to move from this world to another world. Why? Because they don't want to stay on the day of judgment. If they're in punishment, they don't want to stay in punishment. If they're having a good time, they want to have a better time to go to Jannah. And Allah will then enter people in the last life, the sixth life for any man or woman is either Jahannam or it's Jannah. It's either the fire or it's the garden. It's either going to be punishment or it's going to be delight. And what is that, my friends? We need to wake up and say to ourselves, we want to spend these 60 years here, these 50 years here, these 40 years here, these 20 years here, these 10 years here. I don't know how long you've got left. It might be one more year you've got left. It might be half a year, it might be a few months, or may maybe a few weeks that you've got left. I don't know, you don't know. We want to spend the rest of the time for what? For a life on this earth? 
or for a life that I have, which is expanding from Alamul Arwah all the way to eternal Jannah. See, when we go to Jannah, Subhanallah al I want you to hear these words. This is going to be a party that's going to be held in Jannah. You know, in this world when sometimes we're together and we have a lovely time with one another and we see each other and sometimes you get together, you're on your sofas or your couches and the, and the food has been given to you and the drinks are going around and you're having a lovely sip and you're lovely chat with your friends and you say, you know, guy, do you remember that incident? Hey, hey do you remember? Do you remember? Hey, you know, hey, to Khorsile, 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 hey, hey. Admit it, admit it, you did it, you did it, and he goes, hey, okay, I did it, I did it. So the laugh is on, the joke is on. All right, you did something in the past and you talk about it. And the good times, you get to, you get to talk to one another about the good times and the past time. Well, in Jannah, they're going to do the same thing. So I want to, you to listen to this. And I'm going to recite it to you. And I'm going to give you translation. And I want you to think about this party in Jannah. And they're going to refer to our world here. They're going to refer to doubts in this world about that world here. They're going to refer to what? They're going to refer to if they hadn't changed their life here right now, they would have been completely gone in the next world to Jahannam. They will refer to what? They will say that they'll never die. They will, they will refer to the fact that they will never see punishment ever. And Allah Azza wa Jal will give the biggest lesson at the end. And I want you to take this lesson with you. What did Allah Azza wa Jal say in the Quran about that? And if you look in the Quran, Surah number 37, Ayah number 41, you will find this. A'udhu Billahi Min Shaitan Rajeem. Ula'ika lahum rizqun ma'lumun fawakihu wa hum mukramun. They, the people of Jannah, will be given provisions that they know of, which is fruits, Fruits, where they are honored with those fruits. In gardens of delight, many, many gardens of delight, where they, where they can't see any days of worry. Reclining, just like we recline in this world, reclining on couches facing one another. يُطَافُ عَلَيْهِمْ بِكَأْسٍ مِّنْ مَعِينٍ Around them servants will be given drinks that will rotate around them. These are men and women in Jannah who've made it in Jannah. And these drinks are from a fountain and the fountain is of wine. بَيْضَاءَ لَذَّةٍ لِلشَّارِبِينَ White drink, beautiful and lovely for those who drink it. لَا فِيهَا غَوْلٌ وَلَا هُمْ عَنْهَا يُنْزَفُونَ Neither they will have a headache, nor will they get drunk from drinking this. So you can drink as much as you want. Much as you want. And after that, what will happen? Allah says, وَلَا هُمْ عَنْهَا يُنْزِفُونَ وَعِنْدَهُمْ قَاصِرَاتُ الطَّرْفِعِينَ Around them will be women who will have their eyes down, the eyes are only for their beloved. And Allah says about them, as if كَأَنَّهُنَّ بَيْضٌ مَكْنُونَ Like an ostrich or a bird that gives that has some eggs and saves and protects them from dirt and dust. These women in Jannah have got no dirt in their history whatsoever. Allah then says, One of them asks his, his friends in Jannah, he says, Hey, you know, as they're speaking and as they're talking, they're having fun, they're having laughter, they're asking questions about this world. He says, يَقُولُ أَإِنَّكَ لَمِنَ الْمُصَدِّقِينَ فَقَالَ قَائِلٌ مِّنْهُمْ إِنِّي كَانَ لِي قَرِيبٌ One of them will say, I used to have a friend in the world who used to visit me. And he used to say to me, يَقُولُ أَإِنَّكَ لَمِنَ الْمُصَدِّقِينَ Are you really serious when you tell me about the next world? Are you serious we're going to go to another world? أَإِذَا مِتْنَا وَكُنَّا تُرَابًا وَعِظَامًا أَإِنَّا لَمَدِينُونَ Are you serious? This friend who doesn't believe in the next world, he says, you serious? We're dead, we're bones, we're dust, we're completely finished, and then we get up, and then Allah judges us on the day of judgment. And then Allah says, قال, Allah is the one who says this, هَلْ أَنْتُمْ مُطَّلِعُونَ Oh you people in Jannah, imagine we're in this party. Allah says, hey, 
You guys having the party down there. Do you want to see that friend of yours right now? And that friend will say, yes, yes, oh Allah, I want to see him. He will look down and Allah will make him see his friend where? In the depths of hellfire. In the depths of hellfire. By Allah, my friend, in Jahannam, by Allah, you nearly destroyed me, you nearly ruined me. If I had, if it wasn't for, for, for the gift of my Lord, I would have been with you with the people of hellfire. And then the people of Jannah speak to one another. I've only got a few more verses and listen to this part. Allah says, The people of Jannah look at one another, they say, Hey, guys, do you realize this? There's no more death. We'll never die again. We only had one death, one death, that's it. And we will never get punished again. The death of the world was the only death we ever had. There's no more punishment whatsoever after this. Now Allah speaks to us and He tells us, and I want you to take this lesson away from these six lives of man. I want you to take a lesson. What does Allah say? This surely is the greatest success anybody can ever have. Greater than you finishing your exam with three A's, A stars. Greater than you getting a, 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 a master's degree with a first honors degree. Greater than you getting the most beautiful woman in the society to marry or the most handsome looking guy to get married. The thing is greater than the success of getting married, of having beautiful children, of having a house, greater than the success of having a wonderful car, a wonderful place on this earth. Allah says the greatest success is to be in that position in Jannah with friends talking about this and talking about the past and you've got nothing to worry. Allah says, Like this, all people who want to work and who want to compete, who want to get somewhere, you should try and get here and this is the most triumphant place. My brothers, my sisters, I conclude my talk. What I say to you is, I hope after this talk you realize that where we are right now is nowhere compared to where we are going. Where we are right now is so small, so tiny, so insignificant. My brothers, my sisters, forget the people who are on your back and trying to mess your life up. Forget them, just do your amal, do your actions. Forget the workplace that puts stress on you. Just bear with it and do the best you can by pleasing Allah Azza wa Jal. Forget the few times you can get a quick, quick money for a few pounds. Forget that my friend. You want to make sure that every penny is spent in a halal way and earned in a halal way so that we can have the rest of our lives. The life of Barzakh in Iliyin, the life of the Day of Judgment with Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the life of Jannah, the life of Jannah by seeing Allah Azza wa Jal, insha'Allah, say insha'Allah. May Allah Azza wa Jal accept all and accept everyone who has come here today. Wa akhiru da'wana and alhamdulillah.